Hello, everyone. My name is Virus Benetes. I'm uh, coming from Northern Europe, from Lithuania. And I'm here today to share with you some knowledge and the practical experiences coming from uh, my work in computer security and response teams, CSATs, and security operating centers, uh, SOCs, incident response service models, and taxonomies. I'm working for a company, NRD Cybersecurity. One of the activities what we do over the last several years is to help countries, uh, sectors, and organizations to build such uh, teams or modernize them. Currently, we have ongoing projects from Barbados, Kenya, Egypt, uh, Afghanistan, uh, Bangladesh, and uh, some other places. So my objective today is to share uh, some of insights uh, from these projects, as well as uh, associated research, what I'm conducting together with other experts in uh, the uh, area of, uh, of CSATs. And uh, maybe some of that will gonna be beneficial uh, because uh, currently we, many organizations uh, planning on building or grading the IT security Teams, uh, in order to become CSETs or SOCs. And I hope uh, that could be relevant uh, for your own path. When we look at Portugal, you already have nine teams listed in Trusted Introducer database. There are two already certified, uh, three accredited, uh, some listed, and uh, one in uh, plans to be certified. So if we consider these teams as uh, digital hospitals, uh, the question is, uh, Maybe it's enough for the Portugal to have nine of them. In reality, as the physical hospitals, hospitals are not sufficient for uh, taking care of their healthcare questions. Uh, there has to be a pharmacies, there have to be private clinics, uh, there has to be practices of uh, healthy living. The same goes with digital uh, health. And uh, interesting introducer, you have uh, nine teams in global association uh, first.org, uh, they are only three listed. I hope more of them are gonna join, as well as your teams will, will be joining uh, and building such operations. So what about uh, today's topic? So it's about taxonomies and service models. Let's start from taxonomies. And then we're thinking about taxonomies. For me, uh, I would like to start uh, from Sandia Labs report with the uh, United States uh, based uh, laboratory of uh, partially classified uh, research, what we do on nuclear physics, on defense areas. But this publication is public. Maybe you have already seen it uh, or read it before. It talks about common language for computer security incidents. It's from 1998, <clears throat> more than 20 years ago. The time flies fast. And it talks about attackers or threat actors which can be hackers, spies, terrorists, corporate traders, professional criminals, vandals, voyagers. It's a longer list uh, from uh, normally thinking about cyber criminals, cyber activists, and uh, countries. Um, and then it ends up with the impact what these actors want to do. And it's on objectives, uh, which uh, goes on the right side. Uh, that means challenge status, thrill, political gain, financial gain, or damage. And in between, we have uh, different tools, vulnerabilities, actions, targets, some unauthorized result. And part of that, it's uh, a so-called incident or something what is called attack. So this model, uh, I suggest for you to have somewhere on the table or maybe read the whole report uh, in, in order to demystify or deconflict discussions when you're talking about security uh, and uh, remembering that when we get so deep into the tactics and techniques, uh, sometimes we oversee what is the ultimate uh, outcome or objective of particular threat actor. So this is what I would like to start uh, discussion from. And then I would like to continue with uh, Anissa's work. <clears throat> we have a trusted introducer or task force CSET, which was a um, few years ago, uh, the work done, I created a reference security incident taxonomy um, in the working group, uh, there was discussion what taxonomy the incident should be um, classified into. And on the screen, we have an uh, outcome of uh, the table resulting. So first column is uh, the 
classification uh, category. The second column talks about subcategory and then the description of uh, that subcategory. So when you have particular incident, <clears throat> you need to classify because of a, a few reasons. One could be that you have particular workflows or people trained on acting on uh, these workflows or standard operating procedures for particular category or subcategory. As well, later on, if you want to provide the statistics to your management or stakeholders or those who provide you resources and budget, you can classify according to this classification, justify what incidents uh, you handle better, what are more challenging, and in such a way, discuss where resources have to be prioritized. As well, uh, this taxonomy allows better between your teams uh, or the international cooperating, while internationally cooperating, discussing how things are happening, what kind of incidents are happening here. Uh, these categories allow to demystify and uh, clearly talk about what is relevant uh, in incident response. Another um, taxonomy, what uh, I like always to, to mention, is uh, coming from Luxembourg team, uh, from uh, Luxembourg side team, <clears throat> the authors of LISP, uh, Threat Intelligence Platform. And in their uh, documentation, they have listed different taxonomies which are available as well as uh, um, in uh, text format and in MISP uh, galaxies or tagging uh, libraries. So this could be inspirational material for you to look at and see if any of what is mentioned here on the list uh, is relevant to your operations, to how you work, and maybe you should start using it, uh, directly implementing these taxonomies or maybe using MISP, and MISP could be um, a jump point uh, how you apply these taxonomies. Then moving to the services models, uh, the following is relevant uh, to mention. So services in uh, security incident response are um, trying to be defined and redefined uh, for several iterations already. So it's relevant to look at the documentation from uh, 2003 by, as you see, uh, four authors. In reality, the three of these authors uh, were still every second uh, Monday meet uh, virtually and discussing how to progress these services models further on. So what is clear that um, CSERTs and SOCs, uh, to be as such, they at least should provide the incident handling service. And, uh, but what are other services provided by these teams? Uh, where to find them and how to find them? <clears throat> so for incident handling, it's important to mention that there is no uh, clear definition of uh, what is incident uh, handling as such. Um, what is uh, could be good uh, to look at this historical book, as I just mentioned, as well. The good publication is uh, NIST uh, 861, which talks about the activities, uh, what you do in preparation, and then detecting and response of incident. Uh, handling and as well lessons learned. <clears throat> and then when we look at the mostly used model so far, it's uh, the model which was existing for uh, 13 years from around 2002 to 2015. And all the services were kind of grouped into reactive, proactive, and uh, management services. This model got a little bit outdated and then um, it needs to be reworked. And the reworking started on the first.org um, organization. And their current model is as follows, version 2.1 for CISA. There's as well a service model for product uh, security incident response teams that we don't touch here on the talk. Here you see that we have five areas of services. Uh, we should start from the left one, which is information and security event management. That's typical SOC scenarios where we detect, monitor and detect, as well analyze events in order to identify the incidents. Incident part, the incident handling part is the top, <clears throat> where we from uh, look at the report acceptance, analysis, um, as well 
forensic evidence analysis, mitigation recovery, uh, coordination, uh, and uh, crisis management. Then another area is the vulnerability management from uh, scanning, coordination, responsible disclosure, etc. And the two areas in the bottom, <clears throat> we talk about situational awareness, that's what we connect to threat intelligence uh, practices and we are provided as a service. So that's where we're talking about data acquisition, synthesis analysis and communication, as well as knowledge um, manufacturing or transfer. So awareness raising, training and education, exercises, and then technical and policy advisory. Uh, another model of the services um, is uh, called SOC CMM. It's uh, created three years ago and it puts in, uh, looks into five dimensions, uh, business, uh, governance, uh, people, the people who are running the services, processes, how the <clears throat> people are organizing what processes they deliver, what technologies automating uh, for SOCs, and then services, typical seven services, uh, which are provided by uh, different SOC teams. And then it has different maturity assessments and capability assessments of each of the area. This is a very interesting work. I, if you are running SOC or you plan to run SOC, searching for SOC CMM and looking at the documentation and master thesis uh, of the author, as well as um, Excel coming in implementation of this uh, model, it uh, bring, can bring you a lot of knowledge and inspiration and uh, thought. Uh, we're using this model to assess different teams. Uh, so if you need an independent uh, analysis, I could advise how you can uh, achieve that and what would be the benefits of that. Just uh, contact me afterwards and I could reply to you. Ourselves, when we're building teams, <clears throat> at first we we'll look at uh, the end result, what organization want to achieve. For example, if there's a limited budget and there's an IT team who wants just to be a member of FIRST and be part of the international community and work according to particular processes, then it's a mini uh, set or SOC. And some of them are in basic, some become effective and full scale, that's a full-fledged operations. What I want to show you this picture is that um, if you look at the bottom, line, it talks about different timeline and different amount of people required to run such operations. As well, all of that starts from the top, from the governance model and technology implementation, all the CMs, all the whatever you need to deploy, it comes only after you think what people you're going to have and what processes and services and how you're going to measure uh, the performance of the services. So technology does not come first. Technology comes only when you understand what you want to achieve and how it should work. Well, in reality, we see that uh, marketing, uh, vendor marketing is driving the area of cybersecurity operations. And in that area, it's uh, quite often technology comes first with big expectations. However, afterwards it does not match and it needs to be reworked. Final slide of my presentation is uh, following. So if we look at this uh, first.org uh, current uh, CSET services framework, and if you think what are the typical or baseline sets of services, which might be called not like this, but by maybe aggregated as a security monitoring or incident handling as such, taking whole group of sets, we can identify easily with CSETs um, uh, focusing on uh, incident coordination, incident uh, response, not so much on detection, because often CSETs even don't have their own networks to monitor. And then some vulnerability and um, analysis and awareness raising for sure. And all sorts you have to do detection and analysis and incident uh, handling, as well as vulnerability analysis because in what we see socks when we see some attacks, uh, we as well see vulnerabilities involved, as well as we manage to do awareness raising. So uh, such tool and such usage of uh, the publication of first.org publication, which is quite long, probably around 80 pages of detailed description of these services, the functions and uh, other information related um, can be meaningful as a directory, as a reference material for you when you build or assess 
or promote uh, your operations further. Or maybe you just need to health check and see or benchmark yourself according to theory or live catalogs of uh, efforts. So thank you very much. Uh, I hope uh, this short presentation was relevant for you. Uh, in case you would like to hear more or discuss, just uh, find me and let's have a chat. I could refer to you to more documentation. As well, soon in November, Enisa is gonna be publishing um, uh, a book which you can download from Enisa website on how to, the best guidelines, uh, how to establish CSETs and SOCs which is authored by me and my colleagues. Uh, so please wait for that publication and uh, use it uh, as a result-oriented uh, framework and uh, providing some additional references and, and frameworks for CSAT and SOG establishment. So thank you very much. And uh, let's meet somewhere virtually.